Fora TV. The world is thinking. Let's assume that you have a, not a first tier, but a kind of a second tier bank. And then these guys decide that we're going to become a first tier bank. So we're going to have to expand our loan portfolio very, very quickly. Suppose that you expand your loan portfolio so that it doubles every year. If it increases with that rapidity, it's quite likely that you do not fully understand to whom you lend. But you understand, uh, it, it's, but, but no one is completely ignorant so that you normally you never lend to people who default on their first payment. It takes a while until they actually default. But during the expansionary phase, if if the stock of loans just increases and increases, you're going to have a large enough number of new borrowers in there who are actually paying in the early days. And as if through a miracle in the short run, then you appear to make an enormous profit. And then you are considered to be a star. But then when the market goes south, and all of a sudden people stop paying, given that the first-tier banks have done this in many, many parts of the world for a hundred years or longer than that, they have already picked on the good customers. So you as a second-tier bank with a wish to expand, exposed, realize when it's too late that you only ended up with the not-so-good customers. But since you're making a profit and a huge profit in the meantime, then you can pay out all these dividends and bonuses and, 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 and what, what not. And that's what I meant when I said that this is why it takes three to five years actually to, to destroy, de destroy a bank. Another version of this is very, very simple. is to say that old-fashioned bankers used to say that you should, you should never lend to people beyond what you can see from the church tower. Because then you know but not those other ones. So if you move too far too quickly, and you can translate this into all the new fancy instruments, then that's what you get. Are banks like Citigroup and Bank of America really second tier banks? No, I, I was just giving one example, because this also holds if you start moving into all sorts of new businesses that you have not done, not done in the past. So it's, it, it's also a general statement when it comes to, say, options, futures, forwards, all sorts of new types of, of uh, instruments. One basically has to, be, has to be careful. Uh, so you mentioned a little bit bonuses. Um, it's a relatively unique compensation structure in the financial industry. Large portions of people's income come in the form of bonuses, which is quite different from most other industries, which is in part, I suppose, a way of coping with a greater degree of uncertainty in the sector. Um, could you talk about alternative incentive structures um, that might be part of a sort of productive conversation about how to alter bonuses? Because in a lot of ways in the United States, the conversation has become essentially a class conflict conversation, which is not as productive about discussing sort of alternative incentive structures beyond the bonus structure we have now. Or, uh, maybe to oversimplify, I, I think that one, one has to start thinking about bonus structures such that they, you, these systems simply move slower than in the past. If you combine my example, which is sort of overstressing the point that it takes three to five years to destroy a bank, it should basically take more than five years before you're allowed to cash in your bonus. Because maybe there was nothing there. <laughs>